Hello there. What is going on, everyone? Today we've got some cool droid spoilers to talk about from AMG's social media spoiler fest. We've got some cool Mandalorian stuff from the Razor Crest that was recently spoiled on social media. So if you guys are uh, down for some cool spoiler talk, let's go ahead and jump in to this. But first, a uh, little admin stuff. I want you guys to know we are still doing the lightsaber giveaway in 2022. All you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos that's going to automatically enter you into that giveaway. Also, big thanks to Luxury Playstyle for sponsoring this video. Uh, amazing full metal tokens for Star Wars X-Wing, also Legion, also lots of other games are out there. Go check out LuxuryPlayStyle.com. You're going to get amazing deluxe tokens. They're all double-sided. They come in a variety of different finishes. Um, you're going to uh, save 15% if you use code Crabock VIP. And also, uh, orders with that code of $35 or more are going to get a free Crabock token thrown in there, too. So uh, check it out. All right, so uh, we've got some cool Mandalorian spoilers. Let's start out with uh, Q90, or otherwise known as Zero. He was the uh, guy we were just looking at. If you guys are just seeing this and like, wait, who is this guy? It's, it's this dude right here. Uh, he was in Mandalorian Season 1. In one of the coolest episodes, by the way, in my opinion, um, straight up RPG episode. Like it's like you know, you, you, a big shot gangster putting together a crew. You're on it, and uh, here's what's gonna happen. So really, really cool uh, episode, and uh, it's nice to see this guy because I thought he would easily be one of the characters that should show up since he did pilot uh, the Razor Crest. Um, so we have Q90. He's he is an Initiative Five, which is cool because he was a very good pilot. Um, in uh, in in the episode, maybe and you might have even thought that he was better than Din Djarin. He might have been better than the Mandalorian because he pulled off some stuff that Mando was like, "Whoa!" So um, so that's pretty cool. Now he's uh, he he is a droid, so he has calculate. He does not have focus. And uh, he says, after you fully execute an advanced maneuver, you may perform a calculate or barrel roll action, even while stressed. If you do. Gain a strain token. So so this is pretty cool. So first off, um, an advanced maneuver, because they did also show us the dial. Again, we've, I think we've seen the dial before, so this isn't anything super new, but it's nice to reference here, because there's a lot of maneuvers available to the ST-70, or AKA the Razor Crest. Um, but uh, but this thing has got, it's, it's got the, it's, it's got the hard stop, it's got the uh, talon rolls, and it's got a big uh, K-turn. So you have quite a few options for advanced maneuvers. So if you do any of those, you can, you know, normally if you're going to be stressed, you couldn't perform an action. So now you can get the calculate. If you do, you're going to gain a strain. Now, if you do a barrel roll, you're going to get another stress and also a strain. Unless, of course, you have an upgrade equipped that might reduce the difficulty of the barrel roll maneuver. Because um, you're, you're not... You know, so it, but if you do it as printed right here, you know you'll you'll still take another strike because even even doing a red action when you couldn't do a red action like like for this card or other car upgrades that let you perform an action even while you're stressed, you still have to follow the rules for that action. In this case, it would be to take a stress afterwards. So, so I don't think you want to do a red barrel roll while uh, while you gain a stress. But uh, but then again, but if you need to, you need to. So it's nice to have the option. Um, but this is probably a uh, a good option for uh, for trying to reduce that difficulty. So if you're thinking about mods, well, we don't know if it we don't know if it has a mod slot. This card makes me suspect that it does have a mod slot, though. All right. So uh, what else do we got? We have IG11. So we saw IG11 talked about uh, and used in uh, in in the last um, you know the the 2.5 rules gameplay demonstration where they were showing us. Uh, they were showing us one of the scenarios, and, and they were using a lot of new upgrades and stuff from, well, at least they were using the Razor Crest, and then they had IG-11 on, uh, on on the Slave 1, <clears throat> which was an interesting place for him. Um, and we weren't sure how IG-11 worked exactly, because Will Schick didn't show us the card, but he just described it, and he said something about when you take damage, instead you get a fuse, to mo to uh, fuse marker, once you have two fuse markers, you flip it, and that blows you up. And... Yeah, it, it was it was it was it was kind of weird, and 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 so without being able to see everything that was on there, we were you know, and I'm paraphrasing because he didn't say that's exact. It's not exactly what he said, but uh, but but it was it was something along those lines where like, wow, this seems like a really bad upgrade. Why would you want to use that? So 
Here's what IG-11 says. So set up your, you know, equip this side face up. He does give you the calculate option, which typically all droid crew members do. Before you would be dealt a face up damage card, you must place a fuse marker on this card and gain a calculate token instead. Then, if there are two fuse markers on this card, flip it. So first off, this is cool because he stops you from taking face up damage and is effectively two extra hull. If you're, you know, because you, you're going to take the damage instead of gaining the face up damage card, or you're going to take the fuse token. So that's like really cool. So he's, it's kind of like just saying, you know, he's, 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 he takes the hit for you, kind of, right? <clears throat> or he maybe puts some of his own circuitry in, in the ship. I don't know. But here's the flipped up side. So during the end phase, again, you should have few, two fuse tokens on him. <clears throat> so during the end phase, you remove a fuse marker from this card. Then, if this card has no fuse markers on it, you are destroyed. And each other ship at range 0 to 1 suffers a critical damage. Um, and then it also gives you the action to place a fuse marker on this card. So so basically, now it's become more clear how this actually works and... Whether he, you know, whether he he couldn't take the action in the video, um, I, I think it was said that he was bumped and uh, and and so couldn't, which makes sense, and so that's certainly a risk that you take. Um, but yeah, so you can kind of prolong it, so you don't have to blow up. So this actually makes a little bit more sense for for higher hull ships. At at one point, somebody said, well, if he's if it, you know, it sounded like you would only want to put this on a ship that had like two or three hull tops because of you know, the, the the potential, but you might not take face up damage and you, it might not trigger if you do that. So so a four or five hull ship, you know, or even more than that now makes sense because you can potentially prolong it. Now it's going to help if you are on a ship that has some other methods to uh, mitigate dice. So you don't need your action for that. And I think that's maybe why he was on Boba Fett's ship. So I can understand I can understand that the, the reason to put him uh, there. Um, but yeah, so... It, it, you, you already start off with a little bit of flexibility because you're going to have two tokens on there. Um, so you don't have to necessarily do this action every turn. You get like kind of one more turn's worth of uh, worth of actions. And then, of course, you know, red maneuvers are going to really be problematic in this case. Because after you do that red maneuver, um, you're not going to be taking this action. So... Uh, anything that's going to let you take an extra action or take an action on a card uh, or take an action even if you're stressed, things like that are going to be helpful, I think, if you're running IG-11. Um, that's kind of how it looks to me. Um, and then also things that maybe, or at least situations that say, hey, you know what, I'm a, on a larger base ship. Uh, maybe I want to, because like this could be kind of cool on the gauntlet too. Because if you're that much larger, you're going to have m more ships, theoretically, that are at range 0 to 1 of you. So this guy may be on a gauntlet. I don't know. <clears throat> Let me know what you guys are thinking uh, of good places to put IG-11. Because, uh, by, by the way, great artwork. This looks like a photo. Looks like a photo straight from the, from the show. So they did a good job on this guy. Uh, but that's all the uh, previews we got today. I think we're starting to run out of stuff to preview from this first half of this next wave. So the, between the Razor Crest, the Pride of Mandalore pack, and the uh, Gauntlet Fighter, there's not too many things left, I think, that uh, that they haven't spoiled. Because they've been giving us like three and four cards every couple of days. So uh, we are definitely getting there. Um, all right, so I guess that is going to do it for this video. Um, and uh, we, we can, we'll be bringing you more information on these as it comes out. Uh, we'll be doing unboxings on all of this once these come out as well. Uh, I'm really excited for this next wave. And then after that, I think we're just kind of waiting for the official reveal of, uh, of the Xanadu Blood and, or, you know, Cad Bane's fighter, uh, the Rogue class, and then the, the clone Z95, which I think are the last two things coming uh, from the FFG stuff. I'm not sure if there's more than that. But those are the last two things that we kind of know about. So, uh, again, once those get officially revealed, again, I'll be bringing that to you. My guess is that in uh, in March we'll hear about those because Adepticon is happening in March. And while AMG has pulled out their physical attendance, they have not pulled out their support. So, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, even though they can't attend, they do some kind of either event or announcements or string of announcements or... Maybe even other mini stravaganza, uh, and uh, for March, and it may not be the same weekend as Adepticon, but I expect an announcement on that very, very soon. 
So uh, I will talk to you guys later. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys are awesome and help make this channel possible. So thank you for your continued support. If you guys are interested in Patreon or any of the other links I have in the description below, check the description below. Check the video description and uh, leave me some more comments and let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to you later. Thank you so much. And as always, don't forget to tie your shoes.